everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's a little bit late to be showcasing some jungle cup battles, but this trainer sent me some battles and I was very intrigued by the team. They said that they reached legend with this team and they got onto leaderboards with it. So I thought I'd share one last battle submission with you guys. I wish I had reviewed these a little bit earlier because then if you guys like the team, you can try it out. But I ran out of time. It is what it is. We're going to be looking at them today. Huge shout out and a big thank you to Yarzard X for submitting these battles. I'm really excited to see these because the team is going to feature Heracross, which we haven't seen yet, or we haven't seen a lot of, and then double safe swap and lantern in the back. He's going to be running Rock Blast and Close Combat on that Heracross, and Rock Blast is a really nice move for it to have because it means that it will be able to fight back against those flyers. Of course, Heracross is going to be taking quadruple super effective damage from flyers because of its bug and fighting typing, but it is also going to be resisting the counters from Vigoroth, so it is going to be performing really well against probably the most common Pokemon in this entire meta. Also that double safe swap, it has access to the payback, so if you swap in a double, let's say you swap it in, your opponent doesn't wait to see what comes in, they think you swap in Vigoroth, they bring in a ghost type, you have that payback to threaten for shields, or, or you can bait and potentially take switch. Anyways, that's enough rambling from me, let's get into these battles. Up first, it looks like he's going to have a very terrible lead. It is going to be Mantine on the lead. He immediately swaps into that double and the opponent is staying in. So they could potentially be weak to double in the back or they might be trying to weaken the double before bringing in Vigoroth because double actually beats Vigoroth. In the zero shields, it will beat Vigoroth. In the one shield, it beats it. And in the two shields, Vigoroth will be able to beat double, but with very little HP remaining. So. The opponent is going to have to invest shields if they want to flip switch, however it looks like here we can go ahead and double shield double and one more double kick will be enough to take this Vigoroth out and this is going to be very important because we will be able to align that Lantern to the Mantine and we actually don't need the shields because Lantern is going to be walling Mantine. There is nothing that Mantine can throw against Lantern that is going to hurt it. The opponent is going to have a Shadow Quaxar in the back. He brings in Heracross and goes for that close combat, but the opponent still had a shield left. They go ahead and they use it. And now we are going to have to bring in Lantern against the Quaxar and take a Stone Edge. Now keep in mind, these Quaxars are going to be running Aqua Tail and Stone Edge. So thank goodness they don't have that Mud Bomb. And Lantern is going to be able to easily survive the Stone Edge and should be able to reach a Thunderbolt against Mantine. There is nothing that Mantine is going to be able to throw against Lantern from this health range to take it out. We're going to be able to take that win. GG's. Moving on to the next battle, it looks like we are going to be seeing a Shadow Steelix on the lead. We just have to watch out for that Psychic Fangs, which is going to be hitting for super effective against the Heracross. The opponent brings in a Shadow Quaxar and we let the Aqua Tail go. It hurts a lot, but we're able to take it out with a close combat and the opponent brings the Steelix back in now and we're immediately going to swap into double. We do not want the Steelix to farm our debuffed Heracross down and have a lot of energy for whatever we have in the back. So bringing in double now and we can actually go for a neutral payback against Steelix. That's a nice thing about double. It is going to have a neutral move for the Steelix, whereas the Vigoroth is almost always going to be running the Body Slam and the Rock Slide. The opponent is going to have a huge core breaker for this team. They have a Decidueye, but they let the payback go on the Decidueye, probably calling a Body Slam because they had two shields left. And it looks like we are going to be able to take the Decidueye out with the counters from Heracross and then spark the Steelix down. If they had shielded that payback, it would have been probably game over for us. All right, the next lead we're gonna see is a Skarmory and Skarmory always has a Lantern answer in the back. So we just have to watch out for that. We're staying in with our Heracross against the Skarmory. This is fine. The Steel Wings are going to be hitting for neutral. We're also going to be doing neutral damage with the counters and we could go potentially for a close combat, but the opponent swaps into a Trevenant. They end up taking three Rock Blasts. They're gonna have to shield this third Rock Blast if they want to survive. They do shield it and then we're going to bring in double against the Trevenant. And I think, um, 
I was gonna say I think we could farm it down, but then I remembered the Trevenant completely farmed our hair cross down. They have a lot of energy, so it's probably best to just take it out with the body slam. The opponent is going to have a Decidueye in the back. Thank goodness they bought it out here against our double. We're going to be able to farm up a bunch of energy, shield one of the frenzy plants, and then bait with a body slam and hopefully the opponent falls for it. They do. We're going to be able to go for a payback now and take the Decidueye out and then Lantern is going to wall Skarmory in the back and he takes that win and with that I believe he should be reaching Legend in this set. Yup, there it is. Huge congratulations to you and that's a really nice elo as well. Moving on to the next battle, he is going to be facing an Altaria lead. This poor Heracross is picking up all of the flyer leads, but he is able to flip these games and that's really impressive. So gonna go for that Rock Blast to weaken the Altaria and then we bring in the double and I think the opponent swapped and caught the payback on a Skarmory, which is actually fine. They caught the neutral move and we are going to be able to go for another one. And this should put the Skarmory in double kick range. But they go ahead and they shield it. And I think he can actually no shield here and bring in Lantern and go for a full spark down against the Skarmory. They're going to go for a Brave Bird here. So we're not going to be able to get a lot of energy, but they are going to bring Altaria in against the Lantern, and this is a huge sign that whatever the opponent has in the back, it is going to be weak to Lantern. I was expecting a better answer, but it looks like they might not have it. So I think double shielding the Lantern here might be the right call. He's able to commit to the full spark down on the Altaria, take it out, and then the opponent is going to have that Talon Flame in the back. So really good call. Shielding up the Lantern, going to have two serves to take this Talon Flame out and take that win. The opponent was running a triple flyer team. Moving on to the next battle, we are going to see a Chestnut on the lead. And this is actually a really good lead for Heracross because Heracross is going to be resisting everything from Chestnut. And also the higher you climb, the spicier the teams get because no one's really caring about climbing into legend anymore so everyone's trying all these interesting pokemon really nice spice there and the opponent is going to swap into a tentacruel it looks like we brought in the double for the tentacruel interesting choice it's possible that they could be luring out the lantern here so bringing in double i think might have been the right call we're gonna have to see but double is going to be able to spam out the body slams really quickly and it looks like we are going to be able to take the tentacruel out investing one shield but the opponent invested a shield as well and his hair cross is still going to be aligned to their chest knot they go for a superpower and we go ahead and shield it that's fine and the opponent is going to bring in a skarmory i like that he stayed in there and built up a lot of energy on the hair cross and then swapped into the lantern and lantern here should be able to go for a full spark down against the skarmory now Okay, really nice here, waiting to get the Lantern a lot lower so that the Chestnut will have less farm. But we are going to have to spark them down here. And then he's going to go for a Surf against the Chestnut. And he's going to save that second Surf and swap out into Heracross, not letting the Chestnut farm him down and get a lot of energy. Go for a Rock Blast as well, but the opponent calls it and no shields it. They are going to shield the second Rock Blast, however. And now they're going to go for a Superpower and they should be in Surf range, especially since they debuffed themselves. We're going to be able to take the Chestnut out with a Lantern. GG's to the opponent. Moving on to the next battle, we are going to see another flyer lead, and this time it's going to be Mantine. We swap immediately into that double, and the opponent is unfortunately going to have a Buzzwell in the back. So we are going to be able to spam out the body slams. At least we take a shield from the opponent. They go ahead and they shield the first body slam. We reach another one, we throw it, and we reach a third as well. So the opponent is going to have to invest both shields if they want to take the switch because they stuck to that farm down they could have gone for a move but they didn't unfortunately now this means that they have a lot of energy for our hair cross so they go for a first lunge we let it go it is resisted they go for another one this time we shield it and then they also reach a third lunge but at least we're able to take the buzzwell out and only invest one shield because the opponent is going to have a lantern of their own in the back and we're going to have a shield in this matchup but it looks like they are going to go ahead and bait us with a surf here and unfortunately we shielded that now the opponent is in thunderbolt range but i think we should farm up a little bit of extra energy to have residual energy for the mantine in the back 
but it looks like we throw that thunderbolt immediately and unfortunately the mantine is going to be able to reach a move and it's an ice beam it's enough to take the lantern out let's see if this rock blast is going to be enough to take the mantine out it's not very unfortunate for us but the opponent is going to be taking that win also i saw him consider going for a catch but sometimes it's just very difficult to predict when your opponent is going to throw a move all right, up next, we're going to have a Whimsicott on the lead, and this is a huge core breaker for the team because Lantern's going to be weak to this, Heracross is going to be taking super effective from the Fairy-type moves, and then Double is going to be doing resisted damage with those Double Kicks, but it is going to be able to spam out the Body Slams, so we swap the Double into the Whimsicott. Now, we just have to watch and see how this is going to go because the Double is absolutely going to have to take that Whimsicott out, but the opponent swaps and catches a Body Slam on their Lantern. Okay, we can bring the Heracross now in against the Lantern, build up a lot of energy, and potentially have some energy for the Whimsicott in the back. We go for a Rock Blast here against Lantern. Hopefully this is enough to take it out. It is. And then the opponent, instead of bringing in Whimsicott, they bring in a Talonflame and they're going to have to shield up that Rock Blast. And now we just bring in Lantern against the Talonflame and farm up a lot of energy. And I think the Whimsicott is in Thunderbolt range, but they go ahead and they swap out immediately. And we're going to swap into our double. The Whimsicott is going to have to go for a Grass Knot. And hopefully this Thunderbolt is going to be enough to take the Whimsicott out. It's not. They live with a little bit of HP. And the Whimsicott is able to reach a Grass Knot. Very unfortunate. We are going to have to take a loss there. On to the next battle, we are going to see a Shadow Dragonite lead, my favorite lead, but not in this situation because it's not going to be great for Heracross. The Dragon Breaths are absolutely going to be hurting the Heracross, and we are going to stay in and go for a Rock Blast. But it looks like he's going to let his Heracross go here. Very interesting choice, but we are going to be two shields up. The opponent is going to have to invest shields if they want to save their Dragonite. They go ahead and they invest their second shield to shield up that body slam and we should be able to reach another move here and this will be enough to take the Dragonite out and I like the idea of saving two shields for our Lantern because Dragonite is usually going to have a Vigoroth in the back and then a Flyer in the back and the Flyer is either going to be Skarmory, Talonflame, or Mantine. So we could have gone ahead and shielded the body slam here because I have a feeling whatever is in the back it is going to be doing resisted damage to the, the Lantern but we are going to be able to take the Vigoroth out with two Surfs and the opponent is going to have a Skarmory in the back. So really nice call there, saving both shields for the Lantern. Oh, and that was the Pikachu Libre set, so congrats on that as well. Unfortunately, it wasn't shiny. I have one more battle here to show you guys and it looks like on the lead we are going to see a Lantern and the opponent immediately swaps into a Trevenant. We go for that Rock Blast and the opponent shields it, probably expecting a Megahorn. And then we're going to swap into double and double should easily take two seed bombs from this revenant now the opponent only has one shield left so we should just be going for that payback because either the opponent is going to go two shields down or they are going to let their trevenant go they decide to shield their trevenant and we are going to be able to reach another payback however the opponent is going to catch the payback on their lantern that's not great the trevenant is still very healthy and we're gonna have to use our final shield here for our Heracross, but we can farm up and get the Lantern into Rock Blast range, go for a Rock Blast and not debuff ourselves, and then the opponent is going to bring in a Mantine. Not great, but at least we're gonna be able to hit a Rock Blast and then we can bring in Lantern and potentially go for a full farm down on the Mantine, but I don't think the opponent is going to let us do that. So they swap immediately into Trevenant and I think we need two Thunderbolts to take this Trevenant out. Or we need a Thunderbolt and a Surf, that would have worked as well. But we're going to swap into Double and force the opponent to throw a Seed Bomb. And then we should be able to spark this Trevenant down if we live the Seed Bomb. We do, but now we just have to hope that we can live the Wing Attacks to go for another Surf on Mantine. And we are going to be able to take that win with very little HP on our Lantern. GG's to the opponent and that was a very nice final match. That is going to be the end of our video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Maybe leave a like. It helps me out so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.